and welcome, welcome to Biz Dev Live. I am so excited to be bringing you Lolita E. Walker today. We're going to be talking about what it takes to really, really make you great. She's an author. She's a coach, TEDx speaker. She's on Rise and Grind with Glenn Lundy and the crew every morning. Stay with me. We're going to get into it right after the Biz Dev Live theme. Here we go. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live, weekdays at 11 Eastern Time, live. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live, weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Leadership and motivation, motivation, empathy and inspiration, inspiration. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live, business development, not even selling it. Biz D with C, brought to you by Cameron T, Cameron T, Biz D with C. Brought to you by Cameron T. Cameron T. This is business development, not even selling it. Not even selling it, not even selling this it. This is business development, not even selling it. Business development, not even selling it. Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live. This is business development, not even Lolita Walker is a sought-after thought leader at the forefront of a movement that empowers busy women to feel and trust the power in their paws, reduce overwhelm, and move distractions to achieve undeniable results. Now, Lolita's superpower is that she up-levels you through spoken word gospel. She is a poet, certified life leadership and executive coach, TEDx and keynote speaker, author of The Intersection of You and Change, podcast host of Coaching Cocktails and Conversations, a retreat cultivator and a change champion for you. Please welcome to the show, the master of wow, Lolita E. Walker, thank you so much for being on the show with me, Lolita. Woo! I need someone like you to intro me every day. I said, well, keep on coming, keep on Can coming. I... <laughs> Let's see. Maybe I'm just not hearing you, so I'm going to adjust my audio. Oh, no. Can you not hear me? There we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, oh, so I, I, I couldn't even hear the BizDev Live theme, so I think my audio, like I... I was talking to you about functions before we're getting on and my own buttons and still figuring things out, still changing up my setup, still playing with okay. the buttons here. So uh, all good. So I think everybody heard you. Lolita, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, appreciate you being here. Tell people how you're serving people right now. Um, I mentioned the Rise and Grind show, mentioned the coaching. What are you doing to help people right now? Oh my gosh, what am I not doing to help people right now? You know, what a great question. I am all the amazing things that you said about me, but at the foundation of it all, I'm just an amazing woman trying to do amazing things. And at the core of what I do is really just grab you from right where you are. I listen intently and then I'm able to reframe that right back to you. And then we start moving, shaking and doing things differently. Walker and Walker Enterprises is really all about helping you feel the power in your paws. So whether I'm working with amazing power women or going into organizations and helping them really sit in their power, right? Pause with their employees and help to shift their employees to a renewed action. It's all about clarity. It's all about confidence. And it's all about the commitment and how you show up. So how am I helping? Well, I have a lot of ways of the how I do the work, but really it's in a principle of that equation for success, according to Lolita E. Walker. It's clarity plus confidence equals commitment. And that's how I show up as a change champion. That's how I show up in my podcast. That's how I show up in my Zoom cast, in my books. The first one, the second one is soon to be published. It's all about meeting you where you are without any judgment. Then it's about gifting you with some tools, some strategies, really some knowledge. Now you can grab it or you can leave it right there at the bus stop because we don't want to carry anything that's too heavy. But intentionally, we want to move into the power that is going to help us embrace where we are, act in our strengths, and then thrive in the greatness that is us. Absolutely and hands down. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And, and one of the things that really excites me watching you on the Rise and Grind show, and, and that's how I connected with you, um, is this idea that 
you are a, a person that does work to really elevate people. Uh, the the intensity and the 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 straight on approach that you have with guests, I really respect it. And you can tell that there's care uh, and there's a, a, a deep wisdom and understanding behind what you're saying. And I appreciate that so much. Um, talk to me about your life. You know, what did little Lolita want to be when she grew up? What was the inspiration behind some of the moves you make? What were some of the, the challenges that led you to say, I, I want to write a book. I want to be a coach and help people. Talk to us about that. Oh, absolutely. You know, I grew up in a dual household. My mom and my dad were there. I like to say I am grounded on faith, on family and on fun. If any of those three are shaking at the core, then guess what? It's a hard no for me. <laughs> I'm not in Lolita E. Walker is not a part of, of that situation. So I am grounded in my faith. You know, when well, there has been hard times in my life, but I'm grounded on faith. I'm grounded on family. I'm surrounded by people who actually want to pour into me. And they're not just yes people. Now, I love the fact that they tell me that they love what I do. But a lot of times they say, Lolita, you need to get yourself on track because this is how you're showing up. But this is what you said that you wanted. This is this is what you said that you wanted. But I'm not seeing you show up in that. So it's really about articulating what your dreams are so that the people around you, when you get off track, they can come and challenge you a little bit. And it's okay to own your yes and say, yes, I do recognize that, but that's okay because it's helping me to get here. So that's articulation. But if I go back to kind of what prompted me to really start my book, my first book, The Intersection of You and Change, it's so interesting. So I was in corporate for almost 20 years, not different than a lot of the folks that are watching today. We've been in corporate and I love time in corporate. It taught me leadership. It taught me discipline. It taught me leveraging resources. It taught me grit. It taught me um, how to maneuver in a male dominated space because I was always in product supply on the manufacturing side in the leadership space, whether I was an industrial engineer or a number of the other things that I did when I was in a corporate space. But when I said no to this amazing opportunity and I was in my mini retirement, that's what I like to call it, trying to figure out, OK, what next? In my mind, I knew I was going back to the corporate space because I knew how to navigate it. I was good at it. I know how to network. I know how to get my job done. I know how to develop people, right? But in that, people started coming to me to help them to navigate change. So why were they coming to me? They saw something in me. And what a lot of them said is, well, Lolita, you're not cracking up. And we know that you're going through a divorce or just recently divorced. We know that you're a new single mom never been a single mom before. We know that you have a young son. We know that you thrived inside of the corporate space. And we know that your line sister actually recently passed at the time, as well as your dad, both from cancer. It was just a lot of stuff going on. And in the midst of that, people started coming to me. So here's the thing. When people start coming to you from, for the same thing over and over again, you got something there sit in that pause and, and ask yourself what it is and then ask them, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is I did a lot of journaling, a lot of reflecting, a lot of praying. And when I was journaling, I really started recalling these, these things inside of my life, these milestones, these events that happened in my life, and they all ended up on paper. Well, what I did from that is I'm like, huh, this is a guide to how I navigated change and I'm standing right here. So my first book, The Intersection of You and Change, takes you from Journey Junction to Gratitude Gateway. And what we do is we cross Forgiveness Freeway. We cross uh, Clarity Cul-de-Sac, right? We cross all of these different spaces, Be Free Boulevard, all of these different spaces where I tell you a little bit about my story. But the juiciness in it all is that then I give you soul work so that now you can ask these challenging questions to yourself so that you can pull your own journey. Remember, I told you that it's all about clarity plus confidence equals the commitment of how you show up, right? So how did I write my first book? I literally sat and I wrote without expectation. Then I looked at it and it had a common theme. Then I said, wait a minute, I'm navigating this space and I'm weaving around. What if I could take somebody else through that journey? And I did. I want to meet you at the intersection of you and change. And here's the thing. We all go through change and we all need to dig deeper. 
So that was the first book. And then it just rippled. It rippled from there. Then came the podcast. Then came the TEDx talk. I think that's out of order. But then came really just leveraging and jumping into what you're really good at. It's about embracing, acting, and thriving. And when you open yourself up to endless possibilities and say yes to own your yes, still using your no as a boundary, amazingness happens. I love that. And using your no, right? I, I, I deeply appreciate that. And so you were talking about going through a lot of life struggles all at the same time. A lot of stuff that was challenging, happening, uh, young son, father dying from cancer, lion sister, and, and for everybody, uh, right? So I'm sorority gonna, sister. Ho- hopefully I'm, I'm going to not mess with the AKAs, right? The, the, the folks, right? So you, you t- talk to us a little bit about the trajectory, just, just getting into corporate, just going back a little bit further. What did you want to do when you were, I just <laughs> I love getting a little bit of insight into the journey, like what people wanted to do versus what they ended up doing because everybody's path sort of takes some changes. And I heard you saying, well, people were coming to me for something. And so, yeah. and, and, and you found your duty, your calling in that, but what, what did you originally sort of set out? What was like the, before you even got to college, high school, what was it that you were thinking you were going to go and do in life? I mean, I wanted to do everything. I saw doctors on TV. I wanted to be a doctor until I saw blood. And I said, oh, no, that's not for me. Somebody gets paid very well to do that. Thank you very much. Right. I at one time, a short stint, I wanted to be a police officer because I wanted to go out and protect. Nope, I don't like shooting a gun. Um, Just me. I don't like how it feels. I don't I don't like it. Um, There's a number of different things I thought I wanted to do. But then when I got into um, industrial engineering, I didn't even know I wanted to be an engineer, quite frankly. I didn't have engineers in my family to say, guess what? My father hadn't graduated from high school, so he had a GED from Jamaica, God rest his soul. My mom um, graduated with a two-year associate's degree. So when I was going to take a look at colleges, although I had distant family who obviously had graduated in our immediate family, we weren't, I knew I was going to college. There was no doubt about it. I knew that We didn't have money to pay for me to go to college. So grants and scholarships were what I needed to find. But I didn't have anyone to say, like, here's all the different things that you take a look at. What if you like this? It wasn't that. So I wanted to make money. Where are are the degrees that make money? And then I went in, it was engineering. So then I went into engineering and said, well, what types of engineering are there? And let me be clear. I didn't want electrical because I for a number of reasons. I didn't want civil, but industrial, is it was more me. It was more the people in a process side. It was more continuous improvement. It was more, like I said, the people side. So I was all in. And as I went through courses and classes and started taking operations and really understanding how things work, I recognized that this is what I was doing and where I was thriving when I was young, but I had no clue. So people had always been coming to me to ask me for advice. People had always been coming to me to ask me how to improve something. Industrial engineering. People had always been coming to me for systems and processes and how can this work a little better? So it was natural. And then you play on your strengths, you learn a little bit more. So then it was natural for me to wanna go get my MBA, to tie my technical and my business savvy together. So for me, when people say, wow, you're an engineer, how does that tie into you being a certified coach or an author? I say, for me, it's a natural progression. I'm all about continuous improvement. Hence why I work with, with, with people to really draw out the best of them. And I take them through steps. I help them see exactly what it is that's in them. So now they continuously improve. That's industrial engineer all day and night. All of it ties. And I, and I love that. And I, I, I really respect that too, because I talked to a woman who was running a supermarket catering operation Mm -hmm. and I had looked her up on LinkedIn before and I saw that she had an engineering degree. And I was just curious. I asked the question. I was there for a business meeting. Of, you know, I have a staffing company. I was sending out waiters and bartenders. And I asked her, I said, um, you know, just, just kind of curious. I, I saw that you have a, an engineering degree. Mm-hmm. Just kind of curious. Why are you, you know, doing this, this, this uh, head of director of catering <laughs> yeah. uh, supermarket role? Obviously, great business. There wasn't anything, you know. Uh, small or insignificant about her role, but I was just wondering why why that degree and uh-huh. and uh, why she was where she was. 
And she talked about it in that same kind of framework. I use that engineering degree every day. You know, every for day. every challenge, for every problem, for every situation. And I respect that so much because a lot of folks, I think, especially in the entrepreneur, and this show is for entrepreneurs. If you're watching this and you're considering, uh, should I, you know, if you're a young person, uh, should I go and get an education? You know, there's obviously a uh, cost value proposition to it, but I don't think that there is any replacement for getting some of those fundamental pieces of understanding mm -hmm the world better through a world-class education. And then if you can politic and network with, with uh, some sorority sisters and that sort of thing, so much the better. I can't, I don't know if you want to speak to that piece of, of, of the education game and, and what that's brought to your life as well. But I know for me, when I'm encouraging young students, I've been involved with a college and career preparatory program for the last 25 years. That's a big part of why I'm telling people to continue their education as well. Because if you go to a spot where you can really gain community, these folks are going to be with you for the rest of your life. Oh, absolutely. I love talking about Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> It is the first black lettered Greek organization for women. It's for sorority. You know, it's all about educating. It's all about sisterhood and it's all about service to all mankind. So for me, you know, joining that organization in college was it, it shifted my life. Not only did I attend a historically black college and university, Morgan State University. Hey, shout out to the Bears. But that's where I also joined my organization, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. We have, you know, so many profound and amazing, talented women. So for me to even look at our history and know that you are the first, like how dare you not walk in your greatness when so many have come before you who have laid the path for you. So when I say sisterhood, I take it seriously because mm -hmm. it's lifelong. It's not only that connection and that network, but this is a connection for life. So even after I graduated, I'm still an active member coming up this year is 25 yeah. years since I've been in my sorority and I'm still active and doing work in my local chapter here. Those years just fly by, don't they? They do. <laughs> So, I mean, this is a big deal, right? I mean, alumni networks and for anybody that's that's on the career, the entrepreneur track, having that network of people, you know, we're talking, you know, the subject today is is what it takes to really be great. And I don't think this is one of the questions I was asking Glenn, who, who for anybody that hasn't checked out Rise and Grind, Breakfast with Champions, you got to check it out. Uh, Glenn Lundy has put together this amazing team that Lolita is part of, and it's just something truly, truly special. They have a, a full morning show. It's a, it's a, it's a full fledged production. It, really exciting to watch. Uh, I was talking to Glenn about Thank stories you. that I was picking up from stuff. Uh, you guys teasing, um, uh, Scott. Scott, thank you very, very much. Um, teasing Scott with with his clothes and his sexiness. Marvin, uh, just, uh, yeah, you know, English suave. I love the diversity on the show because not only do you have folks that look a little bit different, which is uh, truly something I was I was looking at something the other day. Uh, actually, it was a, a, I'm in the meetings industry. So I was looking at a, a meeting industry publication and it was sponsored by a big organization. And I was just looking through the pages of it. And I just couldn't believe in this day and age, just every face was of a certain hue. <laughs> and I was just what, going through the, through the magazine. And I was just like, how could this be? Like, there's no Latinos. There's it's just, it's just white folks um, <laughs> all day. And not only do you guys have diversity in terms of who's on the show and, and representation, but uh, I love hearing Marvin's uh, accent uh, in the mornings. Very, very, very cool show. Uh, I got off track here, went, went down the lane, but That's this okay. idea of uh, bringing people together, being great. Th that's what I wanted to get at is that, he's assembled a great team. Can you talk to people about how you've sort of assembled your team in life? 
Oh, absolutely. Yes. So hashtag rise and grind is an amazing morning show. And Glenn, shout out, he has an amazing vision and has has surrounded himself with people who are going to execute on that vision and who bring all of their gifts to the table. So absolutely did not want to miss the opportunity to tell you to go ahead and tune in every morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And a super shout out also to Alive, who just wrote, I concur. Yeah. Congratulations, Silver Star. Thank you. That is a sorority member, Stacey. Lucky, I appreciate you. Continue to walk in your greatness. Um, you know, how you build a team for me is really being open, being honest, being very clear. So remember, I talked to you about clarity plus confidence equals the commitment of how you show up. That's just not an equation that I talk about. That's an equation that I am about. It is clarity. So how clear are you? And when we talk about clarity, it's also increasing communication. So you got to talk about your vision. You got to have people want to follow you when they can see the path forward. People want to follow you when you are being inclusive and you are inviting their information. And then they know that you are the decision maker. Right. So it's so funny. So since you watch hashtag rise and grind, I said, you got to have a little bit of Scott up in you. You got to be able to, you know, share your story, be open and honest. You got to be able to own your mistakes. And all of those things are really around um, your clarity. How clear are you? Where are you going? How can you articulate it? How are you communicating your confidence? How are you standing up in it? Are you a leader? Because nobody wants to to follow somebody who's like, uh, I don't know, I can't make a decision. No, your confidence increases and the more your confidence increases and you can stand up at the forefront, then others also increase that confidence because you're leveraging their skill set. You're pulling out the genius that's already inside of them and you're saying, hey, I want to put you inside of a light because I know you're going to thrive, right? The best managers and leaders that you've had are those that don't need to be at the forefront. They trust you. So that's clarity plus confidence equals the commitment of now how you show up. When you build all of that, the clarity, the confidence, the communication, the trust there, you let your insecure to the background because you don't need to be in the front all the time. When all of those things are present and you're literally hearing genuinely what people are saying and you're adjusting and assessing as necessary and you reward your people, guess what? There's a renewed commitment of how they're going to show up for you. The, the equation is real. Check it out. I can't hear you. I can see you though. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Just, just kind of walk through this for me as you're meeting people, right? And you're mm -hmm you're getting into that place where you're saying you're identifying this is somebody that I want a part of my life. Mm -hmm. This is somebody that I want on my team, so to speak, whether that's working for me, working with me. Um, I want to work for them. How do you sort of identify that person? Right. And how do you, how do you bring them in? How do you make them a part of your team? And I, and I, I said make them, but, you know, how do you invite them, right? How do you sort of make that happen, right? We, I, I know a big part of, uh, I think something that you talk about is, right, you got to put it out there and, 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 and say it and envision it and then, and then it's going to happen. But what, what are the steps that you sort of walk through to make sure that that's happening? What are the actual things that you're communicating to the people that you're talking with? Okay. Well, I heard you say somebody that you work with, somebody that works for you, and then someone who um, you're trying to partner with. So I yeah. guess I'll just take them three. I think in general, right, without even going through three, in general, it's asking a question. You got to be open and honest. What's in it for them? Help the person understand like, hey, this is what I see in you. And this is what I think you can bring to the table. And this is how we both win. Right. In general, that's the that that's where I'll go. I think if it's somebody that you want on your team, so you're seeking to hire someone, you you are actually recruiting someone. It's also identifying why they would be an amazing part of your team and what role they're going to play. Right. Asking, allowing them to ask questions about, hey, um, anything that they want to know and being open and honest about it. So one, you see the value that they bring. Two, you approach and let them know why they are valuable and how they can add to your team. Three, you ask the question, right? That's that. If it's a partner, you you similarly 
kind of coat that partner, right? It's that you want to uh, see what they're doing. And so I'll use a social app, for instance, because we're both on a social app, is you might go in different rooms and hear that person speak. Even physically, you might attend some of the same things they're attending. You might look at them on different presentations and programming. Even if you want to bring somebody into your group to speak or to coach, for instance, you want to see them in, in different arenas. Make sure they kind of show up like that all the time. It's consistency. That's like when you buy a house. You want to drive by at nighttime. You want to drive by during the daytime, different hours, just to see what's going on in the, in the, in the development, right? Absolutely. Then if it's someone who... Um, is, is has been around for a long time and you're just wondering like, what the heck are you doing? I've been seeing you around, go up to them. Hey, I've noticed that you've been around for a little while. I would love to engage a little bit deeper. Would you, let's chat, what's going on? What do you see? Do you have any questions? Just engage them the same way that you wanna be engaged, ask the question. That's what I'll leave you with. I love that. And I, I think one of the things that I was really taking away from Glenn Lundy's Morning Five, because I've I've heard it said a lot of different ways, but I liked the way that that he put it. He was talking about, you know, part of your morning routine, you're sending a compliment, saying something good to somebody. And so that could be that opportunity. You're waking up every morning and maybe you're you're wondering what to say to this person from afar. Cause I know some of our heroes, um, you know, for example, I watch a lot of Gary Vaynerchuk's content. He puts out a lot of social media stuff and uh, has a lot to say. And I think I'm a, a fairly good interview. Hopefully I'm doing a good job with you and, and some of the other folks that I've interviewed. But I almost feel like with him, I've, I've watched so many of his videos. He's done so much content. You know, if I had him right in front of what, what the sugar honey I see, would I, would I ask him, right? Because uh, he's, he's put out so much. And I feel like, you know, I've, I've heard the story and, and, and all that stuff. But I think one of the nice things that you can do when you may not know what to say is just to say, I really enjoy your content, right? And just putting it out there. And sometimes we just take it for granted that we have that to offer. Uh, and I thought was what hit me uh, with what he was saying. The idea that you can just compliment somebody and can sort of get it off your chest, get it out of your mental space. And it's such a great compliment he was talking about in his story. And I know it's, you know, people have come to you and I don't know uh, who, if there was folks that came along and complimented you and, and sort of said, you know, you're you're somebody that can speak really well. You're somebody that can do this really well. And it's like, oh, uh, I, I, it certainly sounded like that from your story that, you know, people were telling you, hey, you can do that thing. And they were giving you confidence that you could feel that. I think when we do that, it's such a such a blessing and such a gift. It is indeed. It is a gift. You know, feedback is always a gift. And I love what Stacy said there is the spirit of collaboration and relationships. It happens organically with like minded people. And I truly believe that. I believe mm. that, you know, it's great to articulate what you're feeling. People always assume that, for instance, you and I, Cameron, are on here today. People assume that you're getting feedback for today's session. And if everybody's assuming that, then nobody's doing the work to actually send you something. So when you do get something in your inbox, and I'm imagining it's the same with you, and someone says, you know what? Wow, those questions that you asked, Cameron, were right on spot. They really pulled exactly what I needed out of Lolita today. Well, Cameron, this guest that you had on there, oh my gosh, keep on getting guests like that because that is exactly what I mm -hmm. want to hear. All of those things are not only encouraging, but they also help you to tailor where it is you want to go with your show because now you're getting clearer, like more clear on who your audience is. And sometimes that audience, you start with one audience because that's who you want to serve. And then when you really look at it, you have an entirely different audience because you're serving them what they need. So they start to bubble up. So yes, your clarity plus your confidence, right? Increased confidence equals a commitment now of how Cameron shows up. I'm imagining you have a journey story for this here as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I think I'm definitely a product for anybody that's trying to get started with doing videos or some kind of content or you're starting a business. Um, same way I started Toth Event Staffing really was the same way I started BizDev Live to a certain degree. I was just like, all right. I got to start. I got to jump in. Let's go. And, you know, I don't know all the the details. I don't know how to do everything right. I don't I, I don't know how to make this perfect. But I, I know that if I don't start, I won't start. And if I'm not, 
moving and, and going towards my dreams. If I'm not working on my dream, then I am putting my dream on hold. And if I'm putting my dream on hold, then my dream isn't happening. Right. So, and I think that's really important for folks. Uh, <laughs> definitely a key to be great is, is get started, right? You're never going to get it done if you don't get started. So that's definitely been uh, the big deal for me. And I love, you know, the nuance of, you know, Hey, there's these things that we can do in terms of developing people. Cause nobody can do it alone. It's fair. I mean, you know, everything takes a team, especially when you're talking about scaling, especially when you're talking about actually having more of an impact on the world, it, it takes, working with people. So that's a, it's a big deal. I want to get into our takeaways here today. We have uh, some, some stuff that you gave me as real key takeaways here. Uh, we got uh, a lot of checking it. Yes. A little bit of feedback is vital for, I'm thinking she meant vital there. For growth and direction. Sure. <laughs> Believe me, we, 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 vital, I get yeah. challenged with the, t- the keyboard as well. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. All right. So key takeaways, right? So we got this, this first one, right? A momentary interruption can shift you to be your most revolutionary self. Uh, I think I know a little bit about what you're talking about. Certainly, um, momentary interruption is is what I would have definitely called what you know created uh, Toth Event Staffing, my business that I started over 10 years ago. Uh, I got laid off from from corporate America. I was dealing with family stuff. My wife was in Mexico. She had to stay there for for 14 months, and so. That was definitely uh, a revolution in my life. And I started to have staffing. What do you want people to understand about those pieces, those those moments in people's life and how you kind of recover and move on to greatness from those moments? Oh, absolutely. Oh, such a good question. So when I, I love this takeaway because in my TEDx talk, this is the core idea, the idea that's worth spreading in this world is that a momentary interruption in your life, no matter if it's five minutes, five months, or five years, can absolutely shift you to be your most revolutionary self if we choose to pause, right? This could be a momentary interruption that we're having right now that might shift the trajectory of my life should I choose to pause. So what this is reminding us is that we are standing right here, right? We are not our circumstance. Absolutely not. My circumstance doesn't define who I am, but it is the shift to action, clarity of knowing that there's more for me. It's seeing that light up ahead that says, Lolita, this is a moment in time. This is a momentary interruption. Whether you've been voluntold COVID or you are volunteering for this thing, it can absolutely shift you to your most revolutionary self. How are you looking at this thing? What is your perspective and how are you looking at the glasses? So out of your glasses so that the world is full in the endless possibility. So I want to leave folks with the notion of you are standing right here. Excuses are tools of incompetence. So what are you going to do in this right here, in this right now? What are you going to do in this right now? I love that. I love it. All right. So you get into that moment, you're, you're, you're pausing, right? We got this takeaway number two, leap because your faith and strengths have wings to protect your fall. What do you mean by that? That's deep. (laughs) Everything is deep. I write powerful affirmations and this is one of the 40 and I say it all the time. So when you're in your momentary interruption, it's amazing that I wrote this as takeaway number two, because right, it's courage that we need to leap us through fear. It's the courage. And what if I told you that your courage is on your left and on your right at all times? So when you choose to grab that courage, then you leap. You leap into the unknown. You leap into that thing that is scary. You leap into the thing that you want to own and say yes to because your faith, what are you grounded Mm -hmm. on? My faith and my strengths, they have wings that will propel me when I fall. They will protect me because I will fall. But who is it that is going to stand up? I am Lolita Emmanuel Walker. So who am I? Who am I at the core? That is what is going to grab me. And then that's how I know that I'm going to be okay. I've been through my worst problems because I'm sitting right here. And I too will persevere. So for somebody that's that's watching this and they're saying to themselves, what the the heck is is Lolita talking about? My my courage, my strength is to the left and the right of me. What? Because it's it's extremely poetic. What does that mean for somebody that's sitting at (laughs) home, they're in front of their computer, they're watching on their phone, they're in this moment and they're saying, you know, I want to jump into this, but I'm afraid um, and I don't know that I'm going to get it through it. What does this mean that they have courage and strength to the left and right of them? 
How can they um, utilize that? How can they tap into that? Oh, yes. Yeah. So let me talk to that person right there. I want you to know that it's more than poetics. I want you to know that imagine with me, imagine with me that you know that there is better for you in this world. Imagine right now that you're so down and you are so out, but you're on LinkedIn because you know that there's better for you. You're on LinkedIn, you're on YouTube, you are gaining all of this knowledge from all the guests that Cameron are bringing here. So I already know because you're standing right here that you already know that there's greatness inside of you. You felt it before. So what I want you to know is that your courage is within you. I want you to know that when you look to your left, I want you to imagine literally, hello, courage. I want you to literally imagine to your right, hello, courage. And I want you to literally pick it up and put it inside of you. And I want you to walk. I want you to physically walk into whatever the fear is that you are holding right now. I want you to know that these are not just words. This is a mindset. I want you to know that you have courage. And how do I know that you have it? Because you're right here and you're listening. How do I know that you have it? Because you've already been through the fire. How do I know that? Because you're standing right here. You're sitting here. You're watching this. How do I know that? Because I've been there. I know it. So what I know is that my God is a great God. What I know is that I have people around me who are going to push me. And what I know is that there's greatness that is inside of you. So to the person who feels as though that, that they can't get through it, I want you to know lolitawalker.com and you will get through it. You will because you're better than where you're standing right now. You're not your circumstance. I don't know who told you that your circumstance makes, makes you. But when you say your name and you look in the mirror, I want you to know that you are greatness. Let's find it. I love that. And I think there's so many people, you know, because people worry about them circumstances, their financial circumstances, or I reach out to Lolita, I reach out to Cameron. I find, you know, I'm always willing to help people. Obviously, there's 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 limits. Boundaries are there for a reason. Um, I, I think once we get through takeaway number three, we can talk about stepping into your no and understanding, you know, for your own greatness when it's appropriate, because we want to say yes to opportunity. We want to say yes to love. We want to say yes to the things that make sense in our life, but it also makes sense for all of those very same things to know when to say no, right. Absolutely. To understand that um, so that you can, you can get through that. I know for me, people want to reach out. They're in the, they're in a place where they need some advice. They need a connection. You know, one of the reasons I've built a large network, one of the reasons that uh, I've, I've tried to meet as many people as I can is so that I can be in that position. Uh, part of my personality is I like being that person that if you come to me, man, you know, I got some ideas for you. I, I got some people that you meet. I, I enjoy that. That's part of my personality. Oh, you've gone out again. Say it again. You had closed out right at the end. I couldn't hear you anymore. Yeah, I think there's I think there's a lot of people that it's not unique to me. I think it's it's enjoyable for a lot of people to be that person that that can connect you to a solution, to a resource. I, I think I think a lot of people live live for that. Uh, we got a live checking in here. She says it means everything that you have to be successful is in you and all around you. Do it scared. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we got takeaway number three here. We're going to jump into this here. Okay. And hopefully that was helpful for, for somebody that's that's feeling that that pressure and that weight um, that they, they got resources, they got resources within them and they got resources uh, that they can reach out to, to folks like us. And, and uh, I'm sure that everybody has more resources that they tap into than they give themselves credit for. But uh, I, I love talking about it. Takeaway number three, you are the greatness that others have yet to see. Sometimes that includes you. So really get into this. What, what are you talking about here that uh Everybody has greatness inside of them. So is that true? And how do people tap into it? Yes, it's absolutely true. We were born with it. Now, have we always tapped into it? No, I believe that there's doors and crevices all within us. It might be right here that I have yet to be tapped into. Sometimes the folks that you are around may trigger something in you. I'll talk poetry. My second book that is soon to come out is called Can We Talk? Letters and Poems to Reclaim a Bolder You. And that was sparked as I continue to go around poets and I'm just listening for purposes of listening and renewing my soul that I started writing again. It triggered something in me and I started writing again. And now 44 poems later, we have a whole book. You know, I am the greatness that others have yet to see. Some 
sometimes we get so down on our seven imposter comes in. We talk the, we have these limiting beliefs that are inside of us. Yeah. I see it every single day, right? I see it in me. Sometimes we have yes. to remember that I am the greatness that others have yet to see just because camera hasn't seen the greatness in me. Doesn't mean that it does. I don't possess it. Sometimes I don't see the greatness in me. Yeah. Like sometimes. Well, I think that's more often the case, right? We, right? Don't, we don't see, we look into the mirror and we don't see the beauty. We don't see the talent. We don't that's see nice the resources that at our disposal. We're sitting there, we're busy playing the comparison game. So we see the flaws. There you have it. That is takeaway number three. You are yeah. the greatness that others have yet to see. And sometimes it is you that has yet to see your greatness. You summed it up great, Cameron. That is number three. <laughs> I, I, I try. I, I talk a lot to myself uh, trying trying to talk about that game because I think the comparison game is rough. The The comparison game is really, really rough, uh, really tough. And if you let yourself get into that mode, uh, you know, trying to grow a YouTube channel, trying to do different things, and you're sitting there, this person's got millions and you got hundreds, you got one. And when you're not playing that game and when you're really thankful and you're really in a in a attitude of gratitude you're really appreciative even if you have just the one you're like man i am so happy i have one all right let me keep it moving right let me let me let me work on serving that one because i if i know if i serve that one i'm going to be able to serve another one right and i think that that's a big big deal I think it's tough though. I think it's tough for folks that, you know, are being bombarded and they haven't disciplined themselves. They got the devices on all the time and you're not in that attitude of gratitude. It's tough to pull yourself out if you're in that comparison zone. So I hope, I hope that if somebody sees this, um, they understand all of the many talents and beauties that they have inside. And sometimes we have to cultivate that, right? I mean, it's not something that uh, I, I know for, public speaking. I just said the other thing. If you get on camera and you're saying things that you don't want to say, it takes practice, right? If your body doesn't look the way that you want it to look, it takes some work and some practice. Sometimes things take to cultivate, but the core there is, the core is usually pretty good. And then I see things like, you know, a man that has no arms and no legs get on stage and kill uh, a speaking presentation and have such life and pizzazz. And so you look at somebody that's got arms and legs and it's like, what, what are you not grateful for? What are you not grateful for? Right? Yeah. I think you hit it right there. Having an attitude of gratitude. You know, what is your practice when you wake up? What is your practice before you go to sleep? Are you really living in the present? Are you living in your right now? Because that's when we're our most creative. That's when even, you know, I firmly believe that personal, you know, personal success, equals professional success. Personal development equals professional success. When you work on self, you show up differently. It's all about what I talked about earlier. Clarity plus confidence equals commitment. And when you can start with gratitude, like I am standing right here and I'm thankful for this piece right here, right? I'm not where I want to be. Even in my own business, there's so much farther and further to go. But what if I gifted gratitude for where I am right now and really meant it? That's amazing. That's amazing. Yes, yeah. it will shift your attitude. So thanks so much for saying that. So I want to hit this because right now we're talking about you have greatness in you. And sometimes we're doing things that prevent that greatness from coming out because maybe we're carrying others' burdens too much. Maybe we're taking just an impossible amount. And I just want to bring up this comment from the Alive Academy for learning in virtual environments. You are so right. Celebrate the one. Often we despise small beginnings. Isn't that, isn't that the truth, right? You know, we, we celebrate, you know, the folks, we jump on the bandwagon for those that are killing it. And, but we're, we're uh, a little less uh, quick to jump on uh, that person that, you know, has just done their first video or, or something along those lines, or, you know, maybe we celebrated the first video, but we're not so excited about celebrating the third video, right? You know, that kind of thing. We, we, we're not always rooting and, uh, celebrating those small beginnings, but those small beginnings lead to those those huge successes, right? I, I'm kicking myself for, you know, I had uh, the YouTube channel back in, in 2009, actually joined, I think, in 2006. And, you know, folks like uh, Joe Rogan and Gary Vaynerchuk were really getting started around 2009. And that time, I'm like, man, if I would just, if I would, would have, should have, could have, right? You know, you don't want to play that game either. But, you know, I just, 
it makes it motivates me to say, okay, I'm not going to look back and say what I didn't do. I'm going out there. I'm getting it done today. On this point, though, with folks that are taking on maybe a little bit too much, I think about my sister who was in a relationship for too long, and and finally she found a way to say no, and and they got divorced, and you know it's it's been difficult and challenging but it was probably the best thing for her. She's in a much better mental state because of it. It was abusive, uh, the relationship, right? So she's doing things better there. For folks that are in a place where they're saying yes too much, they're taking on too much responsibility, you know, you can't do everything, right? How do how does Lolita Walker first say no? And, and how do you coach people on setting up those boundaries? Excellent question. No, no, thank you. Not right now. I'll get into that later. No, just with a no. I believe in owning our yeses and respecting the boundaries of our no's. I too am an empath. I too want to say yes to everything. I too take on too much, but you will know when it's time for you to say no. And you must respect your no, because oftentimes we say no, and then we go back and do it. People only do to us what we allow. And quite frankly, sometimes we already put that language out. We already put the expectation out. So people are asking us because we show up in that, that savior all of the time right? The people that continuously come back to you and ask you and ask you and ask you to take on more and more and more, it's because you've given more and more and more, right? So have the conversation. Remember, we talked about clarity. It's okay. Like, hey, you know what? So much is coming at me in this season of my life. So I'm going to say no right now to this. And I got to respect me. So I want some, a little bit of help in helping me to keep this boundary because I have a couple other things that I need to do. No, thank you. I love that. No, I'm not going to be able to do that right now. Just no. I love that. And I think I think the the explanation, right, that piece around, hey, this is this is what I'm trying to do. Because yeah. sometimes people don't understand. Well, why can't you? Why, you know, why can't you do it? You know, I'm trying to do this. I think, you know, with relationships, so often we get caught up in in judgment. Yeah. We don't want to explain ourselves. We don't want to communicate what our true goal or our thinking is. And finding a way to actually make sure that our loved ones understand, hey, this is where I'm trying to go. This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to go to bed at this time because this is what time I want to get up in the morning. I'm trying to make sure I get X, Y, Z done. I'm making sure uh, I'm working out because I need to do that physically for myself. I'm making sure that I get on. I need three interrupted hours here so that I can get through this work this day. I need my partner to help me out because saying no isn't just saying no. It's it's saying, hey, I need help, right? I can't do all of this. And explaining that is such a big deal, right? Yeah, you know, I think sometimes explanations are necessary to yourself. And I don't know mm. that we have to explain everything to everyone else. You know, mm. I love what you said about articulating. I am such a fan of articulating things. So, um, you know, one of the things you said is, you know, I'm trying to get to bed by nine o'clock. I need these eight hours mm. of sleep because it makes me my best self. You know, shifting language is really good, too, for holding up boundaries is that I will get to bed at nine o'clock tonight. So everything after nine is not happening. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start wrapping up around eight o'clock because I want to make sure when I say I'm in bed, I'm all the way in bed, which means I have to put my son to bed, too. So, you know, shifting our language to be definitive, which is not only helping the other person understand our boundaries, but it's also helping us to understand our boundaries. And after a little while, you're not going to explain to anybody because it's so important to you and because you understand it. And then when we start acting in it with consistency, guess what? Everybody already knows. So they'll start saying it before you. They won't even start asking you for anything after nine o'clock because they already know Cameron's in the bed. So we start telling people how to treat. We can't ask Lolita to go out. She's she's done at that time. We know she's not available, right? Absolutely. I'm I'm on this call. uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Look, I am on this call every every Friday, right? And what they know, the call goes all night. It goes until probably five o'clock in the morning. And every Friday, they know Lolita is gone at midnight. I'm gone at midnight. So get your minds right. Who's going to be talking? What's happening? And it's okay because I've already established what that boundary looks like for me. And I don't need to tell them because it's the consistency of what that thing looks like. They will adjust. (laughs) People will adjust. I love it. I love it. You know, I think that's a big deal. I think when people understand and you live that consistent value, 
It yes. just makes it easier, right? I know I get asked to do a lot of things in my schedule and the more clear I get on what my priorities are, yes. it's easier to place that filter over those requests. So getting really clear on, hey, I'm really trying to show up and be present for these activities. So X, Y, Z activities, if they're going on at this time or this day, and that doesn't work with my schedule, it gives, becomes a lot easier for me to be like, nope, can't do it. Not that time. Nope. There you have it. <laughs> then we got to give a shout out to Charlene Brown, who said, hello, everyone. And Lisa Yeah, English. Charlene uh, checking in. And uh, Lisa yeah. English uh, gave us a really nice comment. Thank you for both starting on my day with a great foundation. So uh, I want to I wanna wrap this up, uh, Lolita. I want to leave people with where they can find you. Um, how to interact with you. I know you uh, already shout out the Rise and Grind show, but uh, how they uh, can actually tune into that show. Uh, I know you guys are doing things on Clubhouse. Uh, so send people there. And then how can people get in direct contact with you? Oh, I love that. Thank you so much for having me. I have had a ball. Thank you to Alive, Stacy, and Lisa and Charlene for coming through. It's been amazing, Cameron. So I appreciate you asking me um, and having me on your platform. It's a big deal. So thank you. Um, folks can get in touch with me right at lolitawalker.com. lolitawalker.com. It's amazing. Everything is right there on the homepage. You don't need to go far. You can also, I can give you a couple free resources. My podcast is Coaching Cocktails and Conversations. It's amazing. I leave you with a couple nuggets to challenge your thinking, very similar to what you're doing here. Um, it has some amazing guests for some juicy conversations. You know, there's also a free Zoom call that I do every other week with women. And without going into every single thing I have with the book, with all of this amazing stuff that's coming, you can just grab it from lolitawalker.com. Everything is to help you to remember that you have power in your paws, that you stand on a foundation of strength so that when you show up in your workplace, so that when you show up at home, you are doing things intentionally because clarity plus confidence equals the commitment of how you're going to show up differently. That's the power of coaching. That's the power of being able to speak on stages. That's the power that each of us have within us. And when we find that passion, then we walk and talk and behave a little bit differently. And that right there is how we shift to intentional action. And that's the power of what I'm able to bring to the table, whether it's with women or whether it's within organizations and working with their power teams. Love it. And I want to just show off the book for folks that are interested oh, in you. picking up the book. You have The Intersection of You and Change, A Woman's Empowerment Guide to Leap to Her Unknown. Uh, talk to me about who should pick up that book. Oh, such a good question. Who should pick up that book? Well, listen, it is for anyone that is looking to leap into her unknown. It is for a busy power woman who is ready to kind of rediscover the essence of her. And I used to say for women only, but let me tell you this true story really quickly. I was at this mastermind in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm there and someone calls me. They say, hey, Lolita. And this gentleman came up to me there and said, hey, are you Lolita? Do you have a book? I said, I do have a book. He said, is it called the intersection of you and change? I said, it is. I kid you not. He pulled it out. I have a picture with him. He pulled it out of his bag and he said, can you sign this for me? And he said, the reason that I picked this up is because I heard you speaking. And if you can pour into women like that, then what am I missing? And I learned from that point on, I shared that story on a social media platform and I learned how many guys were reading the book. And secondarily, I found out how many couples are using it to increase their communication with each other. So there's power in us showing up for our audience, but the byproducts of what we are putting into this world touches, I mean, touches endless, there's endless possibilities with that. And then my second book, which is coming out prayerfully next month, yes, let's claim it, is about letters and poems that reach your innermost thoughts. So Dear Contagious Vulnerability. Right. Dear black girl, um, dear fear, all of these things that remind you that I feel these things, too. And I know you do. But let me pull all of that out and then help you to see where it is you stand so you can show up differently at work, home and play. Love it. Love it. All right. So I'm hoping people are going to go out, check that, pick up the book. Uh, it's on Amazon. Yes, it is. Of course. <laughs> and, and can they also go on to the website and purchase it there? They can't get the book. Beautiful. All right. So 
Go out, check it out. Thank you so much for being on the show, Lolita. Thank check you. out Rise and Grind. You will not regret it. I would not steer you wrong. <laughs> Go and have some fun with that show. Check out the replays if you can't do. Uh, what is the timing in the morning? Yes, it's 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can search for Glenn Lundy, G-L-E-N-N Lundy, L-U-N-D-Y, on any platform, and you will find all of the past um, shows. And I'll tell you, they are amazing. I have some, um, I was going to say montages, but I have some, a couple where I'm speaking in the beginning and it's just such an amazing group, you all so diverse. And so go ahead and check it out. We're always leaving inspiration, motivation, and education wherever we show up. Yeah. You got guests, musical artists, you guys have a good time yeah. with each other, with us, which I think is, you know, you're doing a morning show, having some fun and some humor in the morning is really, really important to uh, uplift people and uh, get them yeah. started in their day. Uh, we got, uh, is this Stacy at a lot? Yes, is she the one person? So Stacy, I love this segment. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. Check out Lolita. Check out Rise and Grind. We will we'll see you soon. Lolita, I'll let you have the last word here. Yes, I just want to leave with everybody another thank you. I look, I do not take for granted that you have been here this time. So to Stacy, everybody who is um listening to the replay, Charlene, hello, Lisa, thank you so much for coming. And Cameron, thank you for having me on your platform. If we've not left nothing today, for me, it's really about remembering, yes, you are greatness where you stand. Even when you don't feel it, I want you to know that there's somebody that's looking up at you. Of course, there's somebody looking down at you, but there are people right here ready to hold your hand as you progress forward, should you choose to ask. So that's what I got for you all. Oh, beautiful. Here we go. Biz Dev Live theme out. Thank you. Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live. Weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Live. Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live. Weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Leadership and motivation. Motivation. Empathy and inspiration. Inspiration. Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live. Business development, not even selling it. Biz D with C. Brought to you by Cameron T. Cameron T. Biz D with C. Brought to you by Cameron T. Cameron T. This is business development, not even selling it. Not even selling it, not even selling this it. This is business development, not even selling it. Business development, not even selling it. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live.